All right, what's going on, guys? Trev back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be a video review for Game of Thrones Season 2, Episode 10, the finale for Season 2. I'm going to butcher this. Uh, Val Valar Morgahulis. <laughs> Morgus. Whatever, you know, the, uh, the... By the way, this will contain spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen the episode so far. Uh, the name that uh, the guy, uh, what's his name, Jackin says to Arya... Uh, and leaves to Bravos, the faceless man. That was that was kind of a cool scene, you know, where he just like turns around and he's a totally different guy. Really weird, like you know, it's kind of hard to, you know, is he able to teleport? Is he able to move through inanimate objects? Because it kind of seems like he is, you know, uh, with the way he's able to kill guys and stuff. And you know, he's one minute he's at the top of the hill, the next he's down there. So can he move through inanimate objects? Can he teleport? You know, what are his abilities? That kind of stuff. It's kind of interesting to see. Anyway, let's rewind to the beginning of the episode. Uh, so the beginning of the episode, we get uh, Tyrion waking up after pretty much he got uh, sliced up pretty good across the face, you know, down from uh, the top uh, of his forehead to the other side of his cheek. Uh, from or, uh, pretty much based on orders uh, from the Queen. So his sister basically tried to kill him. Uh, wow. You know, great sister, that's for sure. Um, and, you know, Pycelle is there and, uh, and everybody else. Uh, Shay comes in and all that. So, they, you know, it's kind of cool scene. You know, always, uh, always nice to see Tyrion. I think he's probably by himself, uh, since Ned's gone, the most interesting character in uh, Game of Thrones, in my opinion. Uh, I love to see what's happening around uh, Tyrion. Uh, has the conversation with Shay, and it seems like Tyrion wants to stay. Uh, and Shay just wants them to go together, just leave, you know, leave, get out of there, because it's clear that, uh, you know, that he's in a dangerous uh, spot, that's for sure, you know, there at King's Landing. Uh, and what do you do if you're Tyrion? I mean, because that's like his family, you know, like, like that's that's his family, but at the same time, everybody's so damn evil, like his sister's terrible. His brother Jamie, probably to him, is the nicest, and then, of course, his dad's not really that great to him either so it's just he's just in a bad situation but you don't get to pick your family um, so sounds like he's gonna try to stay but uh, you know you gotta assume that either him or Shay somebody's gonna gonna get it soon or something's gonna happen there it should be interesting to see in the next season um, we get the scene with, <laughs> with Tywin uh, coming in his horse like <laughs> it was shot really weird like it, I don't understand why they had to put it in the horse crapping or why that was necessary like especially the angle it shows it from first we get to see horse ass and the crap falling down and then we get to see him uh, roll in. it was just really weird um, camera choices you know uh, for that part and then Tywin kind of walks in and he's all just like looking around like you know as if he you know just thinking to himself like look how awesome I am I mean, watch me ride this horse, you know, and he's going, and again, the, the shots was like, there was pelvic thrusting, I was like, oh God, what the hell, this is just not cool at all, you know, in a second I was just expecting him to ask Cersei to come on over and, yeah, anyway, so next scene, uh, we get to see uh, Baelish, pretty much he's going to get uh, Harrenhal, um, and so, yeah, I mean, you know, Lord Baelish is always interesting to, to, to see and to hear what he's going to you know what he's going to do next and you know who he's going to screw over next <laughs> pretty much so i don't know what heron hall will be worth i mean it's pretty much a shit heap isn't it so i don't know but anyway he's always cool and um uh i'm not sure if he's still going to be the master of coin there or if um you know um Tyrion's going to take over that position i i forget it you know how that's going to go exactly um, and then, of course, uh, Margaret going to be marrying uh, Joffrey now. Sansa's off the hook. I thought it was kind of a cool scene where Sansa's walking out and she's like, she's like smiling. And then Lord Baelish comes out and she turns around and she's got to put on the act again. That was kind of a cool scene. It was uh, well shot and everything well uh, acted for the most part. Uh, moving on from there, we get uh, Lord Varys talking to the whore about, well, we don't really know what exactly is he asking her to spy on him or, or spy on uh, Baelish for for him or you know what exactly does he want we don't know but no, I guess we'll see what happens with that next season uh, and then a r really great scene with Brienne and Jamie of course <laughs> and the three guys that uh, first you know uh, the Stark men that actually hung the the girls and then we get to see uh, Brienne just just kill them all that was pretty awesome I, I enjoyed that quite a bit and uh, the the last one was a little gruesome though where she kills them slowly so you know whatever but Brienne's a pretty awesome character. I love to see her, you know, just 
kill some people. Uh, you know, Jamie should be, I mean, they got to be getting pretty close now. They're going to be back there pretty soon, you know, in the next few episodes. He's got to be back to uh, King's Landing. And I think it's interesting. What are they going to do when Brienne shows up there with uh, Jamie? Are they going to let Brienne go? Or are they going to try to, you know, kill her or something? Like, what, what are they going to do at King's Landing? So that'll be cool. I imagine they'll probably let her go and all that and let it, uh, you know, just let everything else uh, unwind on its own. But, um, yeah, so that's pretty interesting. I enjoyed that scene. That was a lot of fun. Uh, then we get we go over to Cat and uh, Rob. Um uh, Rob's supposed to be promised to one of Walter Frey's daughters, but um, you know, obviously he's decided to go against that oath and uh, do his own thing. Uh, power to him. Um, and so they see later on we get to see the uh, quick little wedding ceremony scene just between the two of them and a, you know, a priest or pastor, or whatever. Um, then going on from there, uh, Stannis, of course, Stannis is pissed. Does Stannis have to choke a bitch? That was kind of a funny scene. That's what I went through my head when he starts choking her. I just thought that was cool. And again, Stannis is supposed to be a bad guy. I don't know. I like Stannis. Uh, probably my favorite character, um, you know, going forward. Uh, him and Tyrion, uh, between the two of them. Um, Rob Stark, you know, whatever happens with him now. I mean, what is he going to do? I, I imagine he can't, you know, march forward and try to attack King's Land, like that, you know, you just can't do it, you know, now that Stannis is out of the picture, or mostly out of the picture, he just doesn't have, I don't think he has the manpower, the ability to take it, or even even threaten it, really, so um, we'll see what happens with that, I assume he's going to turn around and go back up, uh, up, up north, uh, to um, Winterfell, of course, and then, uh, let's see, what else do we have, so yeah, so that you know, that's all cool. Uh, love to see uh, Stannis' scenes, Mel Sandra getting another scene. A lot of characters we haven't seen for a while come back in this episode, like uh, the actor who plays uh, Cal Drogo. Not physically back, but uh, we'll get to that in a bit. Um, so yeah, Stannis is a man of the mission. He's still not willing to give up, and uh, I think it'll be interesting to see in the next few seasons if he's able to uh, regather some more forces and uh, you know go back after it again. Because uh, you know, I really like to see him, you know, have a prominent role in the series. He's a really interesting character. Um, so we go to Theon now, uh, with, uh, Winterfell under siege, getting advice from, um, Meister Ewan, is it? I think so. Um, I forget the guy's name. I'm pretty sure that's, that's who it is. And, of course, um, Theon is done. Uh, we didn't actually get to see, you know, him actually physically get killed. You know, of course, he just gets hit in the back, uh, you know, by, by, uh, the, the iron, um, uh, men and you know just like kind of hitting the back of the head with a with the wooden uh uh whatever it was all like spear type thing and um you know we didn't actually get to see anything happen to theon so um you know i i'd like to see what happened to him if he if he's dead if they're going to kill him if they're going to torture him whatever they're going to do i kind of wanted to see it in this episode i'm surprised that they left that for next season for them to take next season i guess maybe it was just one of those things where it's like well we've got all this plan for the episode you know uh that'll be kind of hard to shoot so we'll just put it in the first episode of next season i mean i can see that being in the premiere because obviously in the premiere of a new season you want to get people's attention so maybe they could just have like the guys like uh you know just just slaughter the or torturing him or something you know like tying the back of a horse and just you know ride with it or something like that you know so yeah theon gets what he deserves man he made some really bad choices so that's all on him man doesn't matter you know i mean he was raised by the starks you know even though his dad was a great joy. You know, still, if you're raised by these people, you have to, you know, I, I mean, yes, you know, biologically, um, you know, your father is your father, but you, you don't get to choose that. But if you're raised by somebody else and teach you different value systems and that kind of stuff, you know, they say blood is thicker than water, but still, if you're going to be doing something that evil, uh, I don't know, man, that's pretty rough. So that was all cool, cool scenes there. Um... And we get to see some awesome Daenerys scenes, uh, some cool scenes with Arya and Jack, and of course leaving, and Arya not being able to. Um, Master Ewan's basically dead at this point, point. Um, and then of course uh, Bran heads north of the Wall. Khaleesi's in the Warlock Tower, and that was all cool. One thing about that, and I did really like uh, everything that was shown with Khaleesi in this episode. I've been like, this is a weird episode because usually I hate whatever happens north of the wall and I hate whatever happens with Khaleesi. And it was totally the opposite because those two were the most interesting things about this episode. But one thing I want to touch on is if the Wallach can make so many different, like, uh, you know, shadow clones of himself or mirror images of himself, how can the dragons just blow fire on him and kill him just like that? 
unless she's caught in some kind of like uh, you know mirage or something or um, illusion or something. I mean, I don't know. I just assume like if the warlock guy is that powerful, how could just by one of them getting killed by dragons? You know, you just think there'd be like a a better fight than that. But maybe you could look at it as the dragon's fire is magical or something. Right? I don't know. So that was kind of cool. It was a good scene. I I thought that he you know kind of uh, like trapped her there so she couldn't leave and stuff and then she you know the dragons were cool as always always nice to see i like that they're starting to add in more elements of the supernatural stuff now whereas at the beginning there really wasn't hardly any um you know magic or anything like that barely at all the first season we didn't get to see any did we at all um, let me think what was in the first season no there was no magic no none of that stuff at all uh, dragons were just being born at the end but for the entire season, there was almost nothing. So that was, uh, you know, kind of cool to see a little bit more getting added in there. Everything with Gleesy was cool locking um, Zaros uh, in the uh, his own empty um, vault was cool. Uh, I like that. Everything like everything like that was good. But I hope uh, I hope the warlock dude's not dead just like that because that would be kind of weak if he's just dead just like that and that's it. Uh, at least I don't know. In my opinion, it would be because I would think he'd be tougher than that. You know, like a little bit of fire. I mean, come on, the guy's able to like create like 10 shadow clones of himself. He's got this huge freaking warlock tower that brings people to different planes of existence and stuff like that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and then they cut, we cut over to uh, Bran, of course, heading to, um, heading north uh, to the wall. Uh, we find out later on that's probably not a good place to go, but where is a good place to go? I mean, you really don't know at this point. Um, yeah, the, the environment inside the warlock's tower is really cool. We can see, you know, the snow and everything and it was just really beautiful. And then, of course, we see Cal Drogo, um, sort of like just uh, like a dream type sequence. And uh, I thought one scene he was funny was <laughs> he says uh, his question is for wise men with skinny arms. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's pretty good. I, I like that line. That was just really funny to see. And uh, moving on from there, then we get to see some awesome scenes north of the wall. The best stuff north of the wall since you know, the show has started, in my opinion. Since, like, the first episode of the first season, this is the best stuff. So, first we get to see John killing, um, what was his name? Karen or Karen? I don't really understand that. Maybe it's because they're sworn to not say anything, and, and John says something, so then he gets so mad because he's, you know, he's trying to, you know, keep his mouth shut and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that was all, uh, that was all great. Love to see how he, how he killed him just like that. That was really cool. Cause you know, John's an awesome swordsman. So, I mean, obviously that's a good skill. It's going to come in handy a lot for him for sure. Uh, but he's still, he's still fair, you know, pretty much captured, but, uh, you know, that was all cool. And then finally the scene at the end, which, uh, was probably, uh, one of the coolest, the coolest scene in this episode and one of the coolest scenes in the show period. Uh, are of the uh, the White Walkers as they come in and zombies, yes, <laughs> not just zombie uh, like knights. You've got like a zombie horse, which was sick, and uh, and Sam, of course, is just like you know like hiding. <laughs> and, I mean, I assume the thing saw him, but just wasn't interested because he ob it, it obviously knew that Sam was not ready to fight, and if it would, <laughs> it would have just had to kill him just like that. But um, yeah, that was really cool. The one on the horseback was was really neat looking, and um, yeah, and they're white. I mean, I, I did a video go, a while ago talking about the White Walkers and how cool they look and stuff, and somebody said White Walkers are black. They're not white in the comments. I was like, what? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Anyway, so there you go, buddy. They're they're obviously white, blue eyes, and just really cool looking. You know, I love zombies. You guys know I I love zombies. So. You know, whenever you get to see something like that, that's just freaking sweet. Zombie horse, uh, undead white walker on his, uh, you know, riding the zombie horse. And then you get to see all the zombie guys just walking towards the wall, which is very, very cool. I do get the feeling, though, they're going to be uber slow. So it's going to take them like three episodes to get there <laughs> at least. I mean, they may look like they weren't that far away from the wall. Um, but I'm assuming it's going to take like three, four, or five episodes before they get there. Uh, and then that's got to blow the budget up too, because you got the CG involved with the, uh, the undead, uh, the walkers. So, you know, I don't, I don't know. It, obviously I think that adds a lot of really interesting elements to the show. And, uh, you know, no matter where anybody is really in Game of Thrones, they're not safe. You know, if they stay at King's Landing, they're not safe. If they go to Harrenhal, they're definitely not safe. If they go to like Winterfell's down now, you know, um, 
you know, the walls in jeopardy, like there's, there's nowhere safe now. So <laughs> very cool. Um, I'm going to give this episode a nine out of 10. I thought it was an awesome episode, uh, a settling down at the beginning after, of course, uh, Blackwater. Um, but you know, again, just, you know, awesome developments, Khaleesi storyline paid off finally. God, that took forever, <laughs> man. Um, uh, North of the Wall finally paid off. That took a long time, too. Uh, but, yeah, definitely interesting developments in those two. Uh, interesting to see everything. I just can't wait for the next season. And um, I absolutely love this season of Game of Thrones. That was a lot of fun. Let me know what you guys thought about the season finale. I think they chose the right scene for the season finale. You know, to end on that scene where you get to see that supernatural of the undead rise and coming towards the wall, very, very cool. Three... Um, Three horn blows for uh, White Walkers. Cool. Let me know what you guys thought about it. That's it for this review. See you guys uh, next season for Game of Thrones. And, of course, you know, uh, for any kind of videos that I will do regarding uh, Game of Thrones, I'll still do some. I mean, you know, it, I've got a couple more planned, but not not too, too many, of course. Uh, Walking Dead, uh, more zombies in there. A lot more zombies in there. Uh, <laughs> and as well as all kinds of other reviews for just whatever's going on, you know. Uh, feel free to subscribe if you guys have it. Later, guys. Peace.